Listen, I've been in your shoes. I shoot for fun and most pictures end up on my computer and then on Instagram. But some of them are family pictures, which, although also end up in digital archives, deserve to be printed out and fill up the family album. I've used a few instant photo cameras like Polaroid and Instax. Currently I use the Instax Wide 300. But I also have an awesome little Ricoh GR10. If you watched my review of it, you know that I use it exclusively to capture my favorite moments with family and friends. Before, I would ask my lab to print the photos for me, but the price and inconveniences made me think of another way of doing it. Hence, Fujifilm Printchow Smart 2, which we'll talk about today. Hello and welcome back to one and only Aperture Value. Today's episode is about this little printer here from Fuji, Printchow Smart 2. Now you might be wondering what the f*** is this Printchow thing? And I don't blame you for seeing this guy for the first time, since for some unknown reasons to me, it is only available in Southeastern Asia. If you have any idea why is it so, let me know in the comments down below. Printchow Smart 2 is not your regular jet printer. Talking about it, there's no ink at all which is the first great advantage of it. I've used jet printers before and I'm using it now for work and these things are unreliable over time, ink cartridges are super expensive and every error, which believe me will happen for sure, has to be dealt with a little bit of voodoo involved. So how does it print the picture without the ink? Printchow uses a thermal dye sublimation process. Instead of ink, it uses a ribbon with cyan, magenta and yellow dyes that are applied one after another. This process is more time consuming, but the results can last indefinitely if stored properly in a dark and dry place like a photo album. Despite being so small and weighing about 2.8 pounds or 1.3 kilos, the printer itself manages to have a dedicated space for a removable paper tray and a battery pack that lasts for about one and a half hours, enough for 40 full-size prints. In front you have an opening for inserting the paper tray and four LEDs for power, Wi-Fi, router connection and a low battery warning. On the side you have an opening to insert the ribbon cartridge. Japanese engineering makes it convenient for you to manage the printer. Ribbon is enough for 40 shots, so is the battery, and so is the paper pack which has 40 sheets each. So by the time you finish your paper pack, you know for sure that you also need to change the ribbon and recharge the battery. In the back you have a grill, physical power and Wi-Fi buttons, as well as a charging port. Printchow Smart 2 is intended to be used with a dedicated app, but you can also print directly from your phone using AirPrint on iPhone for example. There is also an option to connect printer to the router, so multiple devices can have an access. As for the app, it does have English and the design is, well, let's call it purely functional. Inside, you can use Fuji's filters and templates, use automatic image processing or edit the picture yourself, on a basic level of course. They also give an option of dating printing and various ID photo printing templates, which is great. Overall, I'm a fan of this minimalistic design and the boxy shape makes it easy to manage and store it. Printchow Smart 2 comes in pink, white and blue colors, so obviously the target audience is the same that buys Hello Kitty Instax cameras. I also really like that everything I need can be stored in one unit, no need to find a place to store a paper tray or charger somewhere else. Just take it out and use it. None of the other similar printers offer same convenience. Now to the main part, the actual prints. Printchow can do nice 6 inch borderless prints as well as various other crops if you wish, including collages and ID photos for various purposes. The paper comes in two packs, 20 sheets in each. You can load up to 20 into the tray at once. On the longer ends you get small tear-off strips to make your photo completely borderless. Or you can print two square photos and keep the strips to resemble an Instax card.
By the way, compared to Instax photos, 6 inch is definitely bigger and since the photo can be printed from any camera, the image quality is much better. The only caveat is that I've noticed some minor artifacts while printing HDR iPhone shots, so make sure to convert them to regular format to avoid any troubles. As for the price, it is 2-3 times cheaper per photo than the biggest Instax white cards, depending what kind of deal you're getting for your Instax cartridges. The colors are vivid and look great with the glossy protective finish. This film coating is not afraid of water, dust, fingerprints and, what's more important, oxidation. And as I've mentioned before, dye sublimation produces very long-lasting results, up to 100 years according to different manufacturers, but can be indefinitely if you take simple care of your prints. But even half of that cannot be reached so easy by regular inkjet printers. Purchasing a decent inkjet photo printer and the required quality ink and paper is of course expensive as f you can get cheaper price for prints done by lab, but in order to get a similar quality borderless 6-inch glossy prints, you'll probably have to cash out more than what you'll pay for print out paper and ribbon. I'm not even talking about the convenience and privacy of printing your pictures from the comfort of your home. I don't want to see my pictures pop up somewhere for sale, you know. Fujifilm Printha is not the only printer of its kind on the market. The most obvious ones are Canon Selfie CP1300, the only one available outside Asia, Mida 1S printer from Notorious Xiaomi and also Xprint DHP510. While Canon's offering is the most expensive, it offers an LCD screen and more features, but uh, it does not offer an internal battery pack for instance. You'll have to purchase it separately if you want, which adds to the cost and overall bulk it does, however, print a bit faster than Fuji. Other two printers are from Chinese brands that offer similar functionality for cheap price, but it does come at a cost. Media, for instance, is the loudest of the four, while Xprint is the slowest one. I'm not even talking about consistent quality problems with both that are reported by Chinese users online. While I agree that Canon probably has more experience in making printers, I still prefer Fuji because with this type of printing process involving color layers, I would rather trust a company that made a name producing photographic film. After all, it is a Fuji film. All in all, I really hope that this printer makes its way into European and American markets since it is too nice of a product to pass for photographers. And if not, Maybe have a look at Canon then, it's a bit more expensive, but the results are totally worth it. If you have any better way of printing photos at home that doesn't require converting one of your bathrooms into a freaking lab, I'll be glad to hear out from you. Meanwhile, I will enjoy this little printer and print anything I want, but uh, please don't tell my lab about it.